Happy Family, thank you so much for joining us online. Uh, we have some great messages coming today from our SALT students. Hope you enjoy. Good morning. How are y'all doing? Good. So when I was asking God about what he wanted me to share about this morning, I kept hearing this phrase, walking in your God-given purpose. More specifically, what happens when you walk in your God-given purpose. So let's look at some verses. The first and most popular verse that we're going to look at is Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans that I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. But I thought it was more important that we have just more than one verse because it's very important as Christians to have multiple verses in our tool belt. So Jeremiah 1, 5 says, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. And Romans 8, 28. And I know the plans that I, and I know, for those who love God, all things work together for good, and those who are called according to his purpose. The verse that's going to be kind of our main thing today is 2 Timothy 1, 8 through 9. Do not be ashamed, then, of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner, but join with me in suffering for the gospel, relying on the power of God who saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace. This verse highlights two important aspects of how to walk in the purpose God has for us, testimony and relying on the power of God. Sharing our story and the freedom we have in Christ is our great commission. The gospel is how we use our talents, our words, and even our lives to share with others what God is doing with us. Something I've realized in our, my walk with the Lord is that our testimony is to be shared alongside with the gospel. Every time that we're supposed to share the gospel with somebody, we're supposed to share how God is still working in our lives today because that proves to them one thing. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The promises he made on the cross when he stretched out and died for our sins are the same promises that he's fulfilling today. And that there's nothing we could ever do or we can ever say to understand and share the gospel in our own power. That is why we must rely on God's power and the ability for God to fulfill his purpose in our life. So let's look at an example from the Bible. We're going to turn to Judges 6 specifically in verses 11 through 14. This is a story of Gideon. Israel wasn't the best and the most faithful people to the Lord. They were going after other gods again, and they were calling out to God again to rescue them again. And constantly the Lord is still faithful and saying, I will raise up somebody to save you. So in verse 11, we see, now the angel of the Lord came and sat under the oak of Ophrah, which belonged to Joash, as his son Gideon was beating out the wheat in the wine press to hide it from the Midianites. The angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, the Lord is with you, you mighty warrior. Gideon answered him, but sir, if the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened to us? And why are all his wonderful deeds that our ancestors recounted to us? saying, didn't the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord has cast us off and given us into the hand of Midian. Then the Lord turned to him and said, go in this might of yours, deliver Israel from the hand of Midian. I herefore, I hereby commission you. There are three main points that we learned from the story of Gideon. Later on, he does rescue the people of Israel again, and they fall right back into captivity again. But in this story, we can learn three main things. God has an identity for all of us. God always addresses who he calls, not just by our earthly names, but with the name he has for us. There is a name for each of us that calls off the purpose and the calling that he has given us. When we use the God, God's name and calling for us, we do not have to search for identity elsewhere. 
It is the key that unlocks the knowledge we carry about our dreams and our visions and even our understanding about God and even to a wisdom and an understanding on how to work and walk in the plans he has for us. God called Gideon a mighty warrior while he was still hiding away from the Midianites. I think that's incredibly powerful because Gideon wasn't a mighty warrior yet. And yet, when God gave him that purpose and that name and that calling was when he was able to actually walk that out in his own life. The second thing the Lord gives us from the story of Gideon is provision. God always provides for his children. At the beginning of the story, Israel had a huge army made out of all the different tribes. And the Lord said that was too much. Then he narrowed it down to 1,000 people. The Lord still said that was too much. He narrowed it down to 300 men to go against the entire army of Midian. And God said, that's just right. I think that's super interesting that even in the smallest of circumstances, smallest of things that we have to give to the Lord, the God provides for us in great and mar- miraculous ways. The third thing that the Lord gives us in this story is victory. In Christ, we have victory. Even when we don't see his victory in our circumstances, we know that he is still on the throne. So that whatever we go through in our life, whatever we face, that we can still know that God is in control and he is the one who's on the throne. And like I said earlier, the promises that he made on the cross are still being fulfilled in our lives today. So let's just close with a prayer. Jesus, thank you so much for this amazing group of people that are here today. I pray that as we go out throughout the rest of the day, that we'll reflect on everything that we hear this morning and that you would just work your miraculous power in our lives today and as we go throughout the rest of the week. And as we celebrate Memorial Day, that we will remember the lives that have been fought for us in our history and also the people that have gone before us in the Bible. And that your faith and your work would just work within us and through us. And that anybody here that is looking for their purpose and their calling would find it in you and in you only, Jesus. We thank you so much for all you're doing. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Let's give it up for Ruth. Praise God for the word that he shared through Ruth. We're grateful. Great job. So this next student that we have coming up, um, this guy, I call him Batman. So we all call him Batman. So we could all be hanging out and talking, and the next thing I know, hey, bro, how's it going? He just has that way about him. But in that, there's some strength there. And in that circle, when he shows up, as a matter of fact, a couple of days ago, I, I saw him, and we were in a circle, and, and I was like, dude, you're the smartest guy in this circle. Like, it's amazing. So not only is he gifted in the way of knowledge, but God has a very special calling on his, on his life. And so while this might not be something that is uh, the norm for him or that might be super comfortable for him, uh, there, is, there are riches there. Yeah. And so will you join me in welcoming Sean Baxter? Hello. Uh, well, I guess here's I'm Sean. It's nice to meet you. Um, it's my honor to be sharing a few words with you today. So um, before we start, I'd like to say a small prayer first. Thank you. Lord Heavenly Father, uh, your children have gathered together in unity here today that we might be able to receive what you have for us. I ask you please anoint me and my words that we might be able to open our hearts, our minds, and our understanding and receive what you have for us as to receive, Lord, today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. <clears throat> okay, so uh, I was praying earlier about what to talk to you guys about, and uh, the answer I got is faith, its rewards, and its repercussions. <clears throat> so, first off, we have to know what faith is, and according to Hebrews 11.1, 1, 
Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So faith is a substance. A lot of people think faith is their belief in Christ, but this is actually considered salvation faith. According to Ephesians 2, 8, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that is not of yourselves, this is a gift of God. No unsaved person would ever have enough faith to receive salvation. Salvation is the biggest miracle most people will ever experience. The faith for salvation is a free gift from God. So how do we get more faith? According to Romans 10, 17, So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Therefore, an amount of faith is determined by the amount of God's word we hear, and also by the condition of our hearts. For, as seen in the parable of the sower, in Matthew 13, He spoke many things to them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell on the wayside, and the birds came and devoured them. Some fell on stony ground, where they did not have much earth, and they immediately sprang up, because there was no depth of earth. But when the sun was there, or when the sun went up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, withered away. Some fell amongst thorns, and thorns sprang up and choked them. Others fell on good ground and yielded a crop, some a thousandfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. While this is true in the natural of seeds, Jesus explains in verse 18 the meaning of, the meaning as, Therefore, hear the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, then the wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is he who receives the seed by the wayside. But he who receives seed on stony ground, this is he who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself, but endures only for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arrives because of the word, he stumbles. Now he who receives seed amongst thorns thorns is he who receives the word and the cares of the world and the deceitfulness or the, is he who receives the word and the cares of the world and deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becomes unfruitful but he who receives seed on the good ground is he who hears the word and understands it who indeed bears fruit and produces some a hundredfold some sixty some thirty so why is it important to have faith according to hebrews eleven six. But without faith, it is impossible to please him, for he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Many people like to please God through works. However, here it explicitly states, it is through faith as the only way we can truly please him. And while this is probably the most important benefit of pleasing, or of faith is pleasing the Father, um, another reward is healing. For example, in Matthew nine twenty eight, And when he had come into the house, the blind man came to him, and Jesus said to them, Do you believe that I am able to do this? And they said to him, Yes, Lord. And then he touched their eyes, saying, According to your faith, let it be done to you. And their eyes were opened. Mark 5, verse 28. For she, the one with the issue of blood, said, If only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. In verse 34, he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. In Matthew, oh, in Matthew 8, Jesus encounters a centurion, a Roman soldier, and he asks Jesus to heal his servant. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. But the centurion answered, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak a word and my servant will be healed. For I also am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes. And to my soldier, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to those who followed, Assuredly, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. And in verse 13, Jesus said to the centurion, Go on your way, and as you have believed, so let it be done to you. And his servant was healed that same hour. A uh, third blessing of faith is protection, as stated in Ephesians 6.16. Above all, taking the shield of faith with you, that you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Having faith in God and his word can protect ourselves from all the attacks of the enemy. So all the en enemy's attacks, meaning everything evil on this earth that the enemy can bring against you, can be stopped if you have the faith to counteract it. It does not say you will not be attacked. 
but that the shield of faith can protect you from every attack, as stated in Isaiah 54, 17. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. In fact, in Matthew 17, 20, Jesus said to them, if you have a faith, if you have the faith of a mustard seed, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. And well, nothing being impossible for you kind of covers up all the rest of the benefits you can have. So, <laughs> Which brings us to the third part, that is, the repercussions of not believing. Three verses prior to telling them they can do anything, Jesus was reprimanding the disciples. In Matthew 17, 18, then Jesus rebuked the demon, and it came out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. Then the disciples came to Jesus privately, and they said, Why could we not cast it out? And Jesus said to them, Because of your unbelief. In nearly all the scriptures I have read to you, the reverse is also true. Hebrews 10, 38. Now the just shall live by faith, but if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. What happens in Ephesians 6? When you lack a shield of faith, you get struck by fiery arrows. Hearing the word of God and having a heart that is good soil are two of the most crucial factors in determining whether you have a victorious life. Now the good news is that there is still time to receive faith. There's still time to get more. Maybe you have wasted your time up until now. Most of us probably have. We live in an information age. All of us has access to more anointed preaching than all the generations who came before us combined. I hope my words today will inspire you to take time to develop your faith in these days. Hey, Southview family, hope you enjoyed those messages. Um, if you want to know more about what we're doing here, we have the Southview app or you can join us online at southview.cc.